You are welcome back to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cyrus, and this is the Tomb Network. Here, I do my research into subjects of interest and share with you in the areas of religion, politics, business, and other lifestyle. Today, I want us to take it away from politics to a subject that has really caught my attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's about the rise of infidelity among our women in Africa. Not men in this episode, but women. I mean, the African woman isn't the same like they were in the past. They've been influenced. They've copied and brought the West to our doorsteps. But I want to start with this man here. He's Roger Fedra. His father is from Switzerland, the mother from South Africa. He's arguably the greatest tennis player of all time. So he has won all these trophies and known all over the world and desired by many women. But that couldn't stop this catastrophe from happening to him. He had a shock of his life when a DNA test showed some few months ago this year that Myla and Charlene, his first set of twin daughters, are not actually his biological children. He has two sets of twins and it appears the second set is his. So I'm trying really hard to put things together concerning what women really want. And I'm startled. When he was busy playing tennis and making money for the family, the wife was busy on the other side with someone else, ladies and gentlemen. And what surprises everyone is this. His wife, Mecca Fedra, whom they've been married since 2009, who used to be a professional tennis player, isn't the flamboyant type. She rather appears as well-bred, not a superstar or a power couple, not all over the place on social media and mostly with him when he's playing tennis. Hear me on this. I said he's mostly seen in the stands with the kids when he's playing tournaments in different countries. But she still made time to share Fedra's cake with another man. That requires some serious skills and timings. What could make her do this, ladies and gentlemen? What makes women do this? The one thing that is capable of ripping a man's soul from his body, no matter how tough he may be, that's what the woman has resorted to now. I did an episode on TikTok with my same name, the YouTube name, and it went viral when I spoke about the one thing that women are loyal to. And I need you to take this seriously from me today. Women are only loyal to one thing and it doesn't matter. It doesn't change no matter the academic qualifications or religious affiliations. They are loyal to their feelings, ladies and gentlemen. And their level of loyalty doesn't need to make sense to a man. It doesn't need to be factual. And it doesn't care about reasoning when it's at its peak. She will act on what she feels like doing 99% of the time. That's what's behind all these incidents of cheating and misleading men into marriages to take care of other people's children. The whole marriage process is a scam right now. It's about convenience and pleasure. It's about opportunities and deception. The part where it's for better or worse and building a future with a man is almost gone, ladies and gentlemen. And the most shocking part in all this is this. Many African women, no matter their generation, have embraced this act. They are doing it on a large scale across the continent. They date multiple men, and when they find out they are pregnant, she looks among the guys for the most responsible one and breaks the news to the person. And we ignorantly accept it. Don't you sometimes see families and wonder where one or two of their kids came from? Yeah, I've had that feeling too. You sometimes find the other kids pretty introverted and disciplined, whereas one of the kids is everything the other kids aren't. Totally different with sometimes different skin tone and different height. I think it's time we incorporated DNA tests into our marriage system in Africa at the point of birth or somewhere between birth and child naming to ascertain the real father. Because too many men have been victims to these situations for years. Sometimes they only get to find out at the last stage of their lives after they've loved and poured out their resources into someone else's child. On the case of Fedra, ladies and gentlemen, there were allegations of cheating on his part some years ago. And we thought the matter was put to rest until this happened. I guess the wife didn't forget it. I find it more of a payback than a mistake. And I don't believe women who cry and insist that it was a mistake. No. I find it totally unbelievable and I would rather ask her questions because if she was able to do this to you, then what else did she do to you on your blind side? Could she still be seeing that person? Does the person even know about this? 
Or who is that person in the first place? These are good questions to ask. In my opinion, this is a crime that's impossible to forgive. And so, this is what I'm wishing for, ladies and gentlemen. I'm wishing for the day African men, especially Ghanaian, Nigerian, South African, and Ivorian men will decide to do DNA tests for all their kids. I promise you, it will be a funeral service across the continent. And I pick these specific countries on purpose. If there are any countries where this would be most common, it will be these four. And I'll keep my reasons to myself for now. But do you know the one group of people who will reject this action? It's women. They will never support the idea because they know what's up. It's actually on the rise now in Kenya as we speak. The girls want to play like the guys do. And there is this comment on my TikTok page from a guy named uh, Old Bello, which caught my attention. He wrote, and I quote, If DNA test is made compulsory in Ghana, many kids will find out they were Nigerians all this while. End of quote. What will be the situation in South Africa, in Kenya, and especially in Nigeria? I guess we can only imagine. My only concern, however, is this. How accurate is a DNA test? Is the 99.9 .9 accuracy really the case, like all the researchers conclude? Because if we can all agree it's factual, then I'll suggest all of us warm up to it. Because it's going to be extremely necessary in the coming years. One thing I know for sure is, it's going to be popularly advertised in many African countries soon, if not already. In Ghana, the cost of doing a DNA test is about 2,500 Ghana cities in most private clinics. That's equivalent to 3,147 rands or about 174 United States dollars. All they require is a saliva sample of half a teaspoon 30 minutes before you eat, drink, smoke, chew gum, brush your teeth, or use a mouthwash. As a father, you don't need your wife's saliva. They will just take your saliva and the kid's saliva and look for the match. If you have to do it, then you have to do it. And don't waste any time thinking through it. It's better to know the truth and choose to still take care of the kid as your own than to be fooled into believing that it's yours when it's actually not. So it's 2,500 Ghana cities for my local audience and let us know how much money is involved in your home country wherever you are in Ghana. In conclusion, I need you to remember this if nothing at all. Women will choose to act on their feelings when it's convenient even when they claim to love you and so as a man you should always and i insist always do a quick check on your woman and the kids even when she's acting perfectly normal that one decision has the potential to change your course in life it can change your marriage or wedding plans it can change your current commitment whatever the case may be get a dna test if you don't feel right about the kid or the timing of the birth of the kid or the woman you thank me later. Thank you so much for taking time to watch today's episode. I know the women won't like this, but it is what it is. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Like, share, leave a comment to help the channel grow. I'll come your way soon. Until then, it's bye-bye for now.